Neil and Hoople's Cat. Welcome to my video today on what you can do to stop yourself getting tetanus and how to treat tetanus if there's been a massive disaster and no health care is available. Please always be fully vaccinated and never ever treat yourself with tetanus or any disease or injury. Tetanus is caused by the bacteria Clostridium tetani entering into your body. This bacteria is everywhere but it rarely causes issues unless it's deprived of oxygen. Inside your body it is deprived of oxygen and it produces tent. Tent is a potent neurotoxin. Tent is also called tetanospasmin. Around 13% of everybody that catches tetanus in the world today dies from it. Horribly. The scientific explanation of how tetanus works is at the bottom. Basically tent prevents all of your muscles from relaxing. So you're constantly contracted all of your muscles. Prevention is key and the only really effective way is vaccination. Tetanus can never be eradicated unless we sterilize all of the soil of the planet and I hope we don't do that. One consideration with tetanus is once you've had it, you have no protection from getting it again. But one of the things you can do other than vaccination is never walk around in bare feet or wearing flip-flops where there's soil. If you're gardening, farming, doing construction work, digging in a latrine, you want to make sure that any cuts and skin lesions you have are well covered by a waterproof bandage. And you want to make very sure you're very careful about what you do so you don't penetrate your own body by accident. People used to routinely die of tetanus. About seven in every hundred thousand people every year died from tetanus until they started developing things like an antitoxin and then the vaccine. As germ theory and wound cleaning became available, as the population moved from rural to urban environments, antibiotics and vaccination became available in the United States of America, the deaths have plunged. Thanks to maternal care, we now only really see about five people die every year in the United States of America from tetanus. This means around 100 people a year in America get tetanus. It's not a major issue. In a disaster though, it's going to rise. I know some people who are very misinformed dislike vaccination on principle, but using England, Wales, Australia and the United States data, even possibly anti-vaxxers might see the reality. Perhaps not, their misbelief is strong. Prevent it, get vaccinated. But what's the schedule? Just to remind people there is no scientific causation with autism for the DTAP vaccine. But if you are misinformed, there is a basic tetanus vaccine available. Autism is generally diagnosed around the time the DTAP vaccine is given, therefore correlates with autism. But it doesn't cause autism because that's been proven time and time again. Vaccination of pregnant women should not be a choice as we will see later on in this video. Declining it opens the baby and the mother to tetanus. But globally is tetanus a very low threat like it is in the United States of America? Thanks to the World Health Organization and other non-government bodies, the threat from tetanus is dropping like a stone and has been doing for many years now. However, in certain war zones, vaccination programs don't exist and they have high rates of tetanus. If you're planning on traveling for tourism or business or warfare to one of these zones, you really need to make sure your vaccinations are up to date for tetanus. However, I would argue you need that anyway, even if you're not traveling. Being outdoors in hot and wet conditions in the summer is something you should probably try and avoid if you don't want to catch tetanus. However, the reality is you probably will be, so you might want to get vaccinated. If you catch tetanus once, you can catch it again and again and again. There is no immunity from tetanus. But crucially, it's non-transmissible. If I have tetanus, it's my problem. You can do whatever you like with me. I can't give it to you. As I said, unless we irradiate the soil to the point where Clostridium tetani no longer exists, we'll never be able to eradicate tetanus. Our population will never have a natural immunity to tetanus. Tetanus vaccination is something that we need to keep doing for as long as our civilization allows us to do so. Animal feces also can harbor Clostridium tetani. So if you work in an animal shelter or one of those horrible farms, you might want to be very careful around the poop, trying to make sure it doesn't get into any open cuts. Waterproof dressings, and especially vaccination, removes the risk entirely. Between 3 and 21 days after infection, symptoms will occur. For most people, symptoms will occur between 7 and 14 days after infection. The majority of people start to show symptoms that they notice the 10th day after they've been inoculated by Clostridium tetani. At that point, mortality is 13.2% with modern healthcare, so more than 1 in 10 people that catches tetanus will die in North America with civilization working. For tetanus, there is no cure and there is no specific treatment. 
you're dealing with a potent neurotoxin. For humans, there are four types of tetanus. Localized tetanus, you have the signs and symptoms of tetanus, but only in and around the wound site. It can become generalized tetanus if untreated. Cephalic tetanus, head, face and mouth wounds are the entry point. It's localized to the head. This is very dangerous due to breathing, swallowing and the high risk of becoming generalized tetanus. In humans, generalized tetanus is the most common type. For two weeks, symptoms worsen and spread. Then full recovery, but no immunity for about 80 to 90% of cases. It is horrific to go through this. Imagine the most severe cramp you've ever had, and it's worse than that, and it's in all of your muscle groups, and you're fully conscious. That's the experience of every generalized tetanus patient. MNT, maternal and neonatal tetanus, is a major risk globally and will be a major risk in North America in the event of an ongoing disaster that removes healthcare. Vaccination programs globally are reducing it. We need to keep working on this. We need to get rid of it. There's no vaccines available or time has passed since vaccination occurred. You want to make sure that anytime you handle a pregnant woman or a delivery or a newborn baby, you want to be scrupulously clean. You want to make sure there's no possibility of even trace soil or dirt in the room, on your clothes, on the equipment, on your hands, anywhere near the mom or the baby. This is especially so in handling the umbilical stump. If you feel the need to cut the stumping grid down, make sure it's absolutely sterile and make sure that that umbilicus is gently covered by gauze, sterile gauze and cleaned regularly by people who are trained to use sterile, not clean technique. The reason is that the symptoms of tetanus are horrific, let alone the high death rate. The problem is I only saw two cases of tetanus in 25 years working in a major ICU. Both cases put me off the idea of ever not being vaccinated forever. Absolutely horrific way to die. Even if you don't die, it's horrific. On average 10 days is the usual time from infection to symptoms start. You then have 14 days to suffer in agony. Please note intact sensorium. This means you won't be unconscious, you won't be sleeping, you won't be drowsy. You will have a sinister smile due to muscle contractions everywhere. It gets worse as the amount of neurotoxin increases as the bacteria multiplies inside of you without oxygen and releases more and more of the tent. All nursing and basic care is designed not to trigger muscle spasms in the victim. Hopefully you can maintain hydration, hopefully you can maintain nutrition, hopefully you can maintain cleanliness. The priority is not triggering muscle contractions. Don't be shining lights in the person's eyes. Don't be touching them unnecessarily. Don't be talking in a voice that's even slightly loud. Don't change the linen. Don't open doors quickly. Don't shut doors quickly. Leave them alone in a dark and quiet room as much as you possibly can. The high blood pressure is from severe agony caused by severe muscle contractions. It will eventually become very low, but they're actually dying. In a major disaster without healthcare, they're going to die at this point. However, please don't take their blood pressure Please don't take vital signs. Please don't stick thermometers in them. Don't trigger muscle contractions. So after about two weeks, they're gonna recover or they've died. Most people will recover. Most of the recovery people are gonna have complications from tetanus that you're gonna to have to deal with. It's common in generalized tetanus in the absence of modern healthcare for the victim to have so many contractions that the bones of their body are snapped and broken by the force of their muscle contractions. Antibiotics can be used for tetanus as we're gonna get into later on. But it's vitally important that pregnant women in the third trimester and newborn babies are vaccinated for tetanus. In babies and infants, brain damage is normal after having suffered tetanus. It's not in adults. So what are the risk factors for getting tetanus? Any open wound with soil or feces on it is a risk factor. Any puncture of the skin that has soil or feces on it is a risk factor. But the biggest risk factor in 2024 is not being vaccinated. This is current advice, you should seek a doctor for all of these. Tetanus is rare, but it's so horrific, you need to take it very, very seriously. So if there's been a massive disaster, modern healthcare is gonna be unavailable for days to weeks to months, possibly even for years. So what are you gonna do if your loved ones develop tetanus? Generally before, during or after disaster, you should have a supply of sterile normal saline. That's 0.9% sodium chloride. You can make it easily enough using boiled water and table salt.
Use that to flush out any wounds you have, however big or small they are, before you seek medical advice or home tree. This is going to be especially important years after a major disaster has prevented vaccination, especially if you're working the land. If you have it, what I would advise to prevent tetanus in high-risk wounds. For high-risk tetanus wounds where there's no vaccination or vaccination is so long in the past, it's unlikely to be effective. And that's between 5 and 10 years. Take one litre of sterile normal saline, take one tablet of Pengi and one tablet of Flagyl, grind up the tablets and mix them well in the sterile normal saline, in one litre of the sterile normal saline, and then use that to irrigate, flush out any high-risk tetanus wounds. But in general, avoid getting injuries, and in general, keep all open areas, including skin sores or small burns, covered with waterproof dressings if you are in and around and handling soil. Debridement is cutting away dead tissue. This is not for the faint-hearted. A high-calorie diet if you have it, and if they can swallow. Nasogastric tubes or IV feeding is used in the ICU. Ventilators are highly unlikely to be available to you in the event of a major, huge, ongoing disaster. This is an unnecessary disclaimer. All of this stuff is theoretical. You should never do any of it. Always seek medical help. Do not treat yourself, your pet, or anyone unless you were a doctor. Routinely penicillin G is used, as is metronidazole, but they're both used intravenously for cases of tetanus. It's highly unlikely you'll be able to give either of these drugs intravenously in a major disaster. If you can, you should. But if you can, you shouldn't need me to tell you how to do it. So what I've done is I've looked at normal bacterial infection treatment by pen G and flagell, and then I've extrapolated that and decided that that's the dosing we're going to use for tetanus. I don't know if it's going to work or not. There's very little research on oral tablet treatment of tetanus for obvious reasons, but it's something if you have the tablets available, I would try. Before you give any medication, especially antibiotics, you should know the side effects, the contraindications, the dosing, and the warnings. It's vitally important you know who not to use these antibiotics on and when. Like I said, metronidazole is also used IV and there's no dosing actually available about how to treat oral metronidazole in conditions of tetanus. Metronidazole is widely known by its brand name of Flagyl. Again, there's no specific oral dosing for tetanus, but treat it as if they've got a bacterial infection. Both Pengi and Flagyl are given for 7 to 10 days and do not stop if the symptoms of tetanus end earlier, unless you're really, really short of antibiotics. In the absence of a doctor, this slide might be of use to you, but do not treat anyone yourself. Always seek medical advice. But if there's no doctor and no medical advice available and somebody's got tetanus, you might be forced to use your own resources. Sadly, horses often get it. Good luck treating a horse, especially if it's been a disaster. For me, the best way would be to kill it humanely and soon if it has tetanus. But dogs are different, even if some of them are very little use in a disaster except as a meal ready to eat. If I have stuff available, I'm going to treat my dog. However, tetanus is rare in cats and dogs compared to humans and horses. We're at much higher risk of catching tetanus than my little terrier. Dogs who do catch it have a delay in symptoms of Clostridium tetani because it has to grow inside them and then release the tent anaerobically. The delay of symptoms from infection is basically the same as humans. There are two main types of tetanus in dogs compared to the foreign humans. They share localised and generalised tetanus with us. However, I would argue neonatal and cephalic tetanus are probably also exist in dogs, but no vet has covered these that I could find. The Soho stance is very common in dogs with tetanus. It's one of the early signs you might see. Your dog, on all paws, not just one or two, has splayed them out from their body and doesn't seem to be able to stand upright. The dogs, especially because of their muscles, their sinister smile is very, very common and should have quiet, dark, no touching, and antibiotics if you have them to spare as well. The symptoms and complications that dogs can experience from tetanus are exactly the same as human beings. There is no dog vaccine and no dog antitoxin for tetanus available, as it's extremely, extremely rare in dogs. Otherwise, if they have it and you want to treat them and can treat it, treat the dog as if it's a human child with tetanus, including doses of antibiotics. Thanks for watching. Throw me a sub. I appreciate it. Consider starting an SHTF notebook. Jot down dosages and stuff like I have online and put them in there under specific categories that you can find. If we have a major ongoing disaster, you'll be grateful you did it. Next time, I and dental emergencies and the care of them in an ongoing disaster. Please be aware, I am going to avoid gruesome pictures in all of this series. The sun came out. Toodles. This has been a Tiny Terry production 2024.